My name's Adam Godet. I'm a custom furniture maker here in DC. Uh, I live in Capitol Hill. I, I sometimes think about, you know, <laughs> making furniture can be an oddly um, intimate experience in some ways. I mean, you're being invited into someone's home to make something they're going to use every day. You have to have a lot of concern and empathy for what they're actually asking you to make and then make exactly what they want in the best way you can. And it's just really cool to be a part of people's lives in a, in a small way. So in some ways, it's, you know, there's an aspect to it that's more building community than building a business. It's always amazing to take a piece of furniture from a raw design to a, to a finished product. And so you start out with a pencil drawing and then maybe a computerized 3D model and then you actually build the piece. And at some point when you're building the piece, it's not finished, but you have it clamped together, it's not glued, there's no finish, but you can see that it's gonna be what you wrote, what you put on the paper. And that's a, a, really, uh, a really exciting moment. But then there's a moment when it's actually finished. I'd actually, when I started college, I thought I was gonna be an English teacher, and then, you know, through various steps, ended up in a totally different path, but teaching's always appealed to me. And for a long time, I had made these small retail items, and after a number of years doing that, and at a number of shows, and I think, Maybe the pandemic had something to do with this too, where people got more time at home and more interest in using their hands. But I was just hearing a lot of comments from potential customers saying, oh, my brother-in-law makes these cutting boards, you know, maybe they're not as nice as yours, but I'm sure we're gonna get one from him. And, you know, after hearing versions of that, I thought, well, maybe I should be teaching beginners instead of making beginner level projects. And so I just put a note out on social media that I would offer one-on-one -on -one woodworking and the demand's been really strong. And I'm really glad I did. It's, it's a lot of fun and it's a nice balance. I love making furniture. Um, I do it by myself and so it can be a little bit isolating. So three tips for getting into woodworking. Uh, my first tip would be don't go to YouTube first. So there's a lot of talent on YouTube, um, but I would suggest hitting the books first. So learn about wood as a medium. Uh, figure out just the basics, how it moves with humidity, um, the difference between hard and soft woods and those kinds of things. Certainly, um, the internet can be a great source of inspiration on where you can go, um, but it can also feel overwhelming. A lot of people that are promoting woodworking online have full shops, and you know that may seem out of reach for you. Find somebody locally. Um, if you're here in DC, you know, do a search. There's several of us, and the woodworking community tends to be pretty welcoming and, and pretty low key. And I, for one, would be happy to talk to people about how to get started. I have a book list I'll send to people, all that kind of stuff. And then my third would be, you know, similar to, to those, is just don't be intimidated to start. I mean, 100 years ago, they used to teach 10-year-olds how to do this. Now, the apprentice system had a lot of problems, but you can, you can learn this, um, even if you've never picked up a tool. I've seen people do it. Big spinning metal blades are scary at first, but they are safe. I've been doing this a long time. I still have all my fingers. Uh, so you can do it. So just know that people learn how to do it and you know, it may take a while to learn, but you'll get there.